Hey everyone, this is Matt, and today we are going to be doing some a video of that type that we haven't done in a while. Uh, we're going to do a deck matchup. All right. So before I get into the deck matchup, I'm first going to show you a few things, tweaks that I did to my deck list. Uh, the main tweaks being, uh, remember how yesterday, last night, I put out a video about how you know you can take out the ten traps if you don't like them, and you can put in some other uh, tech options, right? So the tech options that I put in, so I did that, and the tech options I put in, I put in. Three cha Forbidden Chalice, two Forbidden Droplet, although, honestly, Forbidden Droplet doesn't work under er Herald of Arclight, right? Uh, three Super Poly and two Impermanence, so uh, maybe uh, these can change into Drolls or something, well, whatever, like I, I mentioned Drolls. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to try this out online, like just real quick, uh, just to get a feel for it. Normally, I don't use Dueling Book. I don't like Dueling Book. Dueling Book is the worst platform for Dueling Online, in my opinion. If you want to learn how to play the game, or get better at the game, you should play on EDO Pro or uh, Yu-Gi-Oh um, Omega. Now, EDO Pro is a lot more casual. Uh, it's you know, there's a lot of people there just messing around, like experiments with stuff. But um, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh Omega has a ranked ladder. It's all its triggers and systems and stuff are automated. Yu-Gi-Oh Omega is the better platform in my opinion. Um, but I just decided to go on Dueling Book uh, just to see. Um, and after I played like one match, I immediately regret it. So anyway, the matchup we have today is Dark Magician against DDD, or DD. I have no idea what DD, DDDD stands for. Um, I know D period, D period, uh, usually stands for different dimension, like DD Crow is like different dimension Crow, I'm pretty sure. Uh, DD Warrior Lady is different dimension. I, I don't know if, but then again, like the Ds with the slashes and the dots, I don't know if it's the same D, right? Is it? Is it also different dimension? Um, if you know the answer, comment in the uh, comment down below, but anyway. Yeah, no other changes uh, other than like obviously I have uh, super poly targets here in the um, the extra deck, right? I, I Mud Dragon, uh, Prank Kids, Weather Washer, uh, Starving Venom Fusion, Drago Stapelia. So he uh, he do he does win the die roll or the rock paper scissors. Uh, he allows me to go first, which is pretty unusual. So I'm, I'm playing against DDD. All right, so IOC is gonna grab a Princess Illusion and put itself back on top of the deck because I already have one. Bod grabs servants. Souls will send DM girl, summon itself. Anaconda. Dragoon. Grab salvation. Oh, real quick. So my end board is Dragoon, Forbidden Chalice, uh, Eternal Soul, and a Princess Illusion in hand. So. These are technically three interruptions. Dragoon is ob the gate is obviously the, the strongest one. Um, Apprentice obviously can protect Dragoon from like battle, right? And then Forbidden Chalice is like an okay card. It, you know, negates an effect, but like I, I would rather this card be a torrential tribute, right? Or like it goes and match. I mean, again, it, you'll you'll see that it's gonna have a relatively low impact in this game. Um, like it's not gonna do much. Uh, and like if I had torrential, <laughs> this game would be over this turn. Uh, but it's not going to be. Anyway, well, let's see what happens next. So, Genghis. So, I'm not familiar with DDD decks. Uh, this is relatively new. Pac play, uh, played it at YCS last weekend. He got top 8. You know, he got a bunch of support in Battle of Chaos. So, my understanding of, and granted, it's very limited understanding, is that the negate point, the point you want to negate is uh, Flame Genghis, uh, Flame Ping Genghis. Uh, so this is the one you want to negate here, um, I think. This is like your primary negate. I think this one and Kepler. Uh, Kepler is the one that searches. Um, although maybe Copernicus, I don't know. Like, yeah. So I'm pretty sure like this Flame King Genghis is the right correct negate point. If you're more familiar with the DDD deck than I am, uh, please feel free to comment down below and let me know if, if I'm if I'm uh, talking sense or if there's a better negate point here. But anyway, uh, I do. I do negate the Flinking Genghis. Okay, he goes into his contract stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, so this is this is another negate point. So I wasn't sure if this was an optimal negate point either. Um, because, uh, so I read the card and it said that like, oh, you get to place two DD monst pendulum monsters with different uh, names from deck to the pendulum zones. Right, so if this goes through, he's going to get uh, two free pendulum scales from the deck, and then he can immediately summon back two bodies, 
with a pendulum summon. And plus, whatever other monsters are in his hand, right? So I figured, uh, this is probably the right place to negate, right? Um, you know, because he's just going to get a bunch of bodies on the field if I don't. But again, let's think about it this way. Let's say this is a torrential tribute, right? And he did get his pendulum scales, and then he did pendulum summon, like, uh, two to four monsters. Uh, torrential would literally, like, blow up the board, <laughs> right? So, you know, this is just... Every time I play games like this, like, I always think, is this card that I have better or worse than another card I could have instead, right? I always think about that and just think, man, I wish I had this other card here in this situation and see if, like, if that's a change you can make. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and negate this. Um, so it turns out he still has a pe he does have a pendulum scale in his hand. And, in fact, he has one that literally allows him to grab another pendulum scale from his extra deck. So he does get his pendulum um, scales, but when he if he pen summons, I guess he's only gonna get like one monster instead of like two, like three or four, right? So I guess that chalice is somewhat worth it. So the reason I do Eternal Soul here is because this guy here activated in the graveyard, or rather, sorry, sorry, um, I know this guy want, is gonna activate in the graveyard because he he foolish it. Um, and, his, and his ability is probably going to summon the other G Genghis, the one that's 2800 attack, and that Genghis can negate spell traps, right? So before, so after he sets these pen scales, right, I decide before he uses this Typhon dude to uh, do a fusion summon to potentially get the uh, 2800, I'm going to use Eternal Soul so that way it's not going to get negated. Um, and then I'm going to, yeah, get back Rod, DM girl. Yep, so he does get the 2800 uh, Flame High King Genghis. He attacks Anaconda with the Xyz monster, divides it, this is, and he goes into Zeus and wipes the board. So one thing I want to mention, um, a cool thing about, you know, so Rod, Rod Souls is like our best two-card two combo, right? So this Rod, like I started with Rod Souls, I went through the combo, I got June, and this Rod was recycled back f through um, Eternal Soul, right? Um, you know, and then the Tribute Effect. Uh, but an another cool thing that, and this is something that Illusion of Chaos enables for our deck that I, I didn't really emphasize in my decklist video. Uh, if Rod can recycle itself back t to, to the hand every turn, uh, Illusion of Chaos can make it so you can get a Magician Souls from your deck every turn, right? Like, assuming you always have one in hand, which, you know, if you can get away with it, like, you know, draw a card, uh, put back that card, or, like, put back a, a lesser card, and grab Magician Souls, right? So this is what I'm going to do here. Uh, check this out. So Illusion is just literally going to grab Souls, and then I put down the Red Eyes Fusion that I, I can't use, right? Like, there you go. So I have Rod Souls again, right, into a lone Zeus with no materials, right? And he has one card in hand. So guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> uh, you guessed it. Uh, Soul Servant. <laughs> Magician Souls. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, sorry, I did not put back the Red Eyes Fusion. I kept it because I wanted to discard off Souls to get a draw. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I thought I'm like, oh, I don't need Illusion of Chaos. Uh, I'm just gonna put it back and then get a draw off of Raz Fusion. And then I'm gonna, draw. yeah. So what I did there was like Souls discard Raz Fusion, uh, chain Soul Servant to put Eternal Soul from the graveyard back onto the deck, and then I drew that right. And Anaconda again. This time I'm doing Magicalized Fusion instead of Raz Fusion because uh, my materials are in the grave. And then Pop Juice, attack. Attack. So at this point, I have I have Eternal Soul and Droplet. Eternal Soul will obviously recycle my rod. Uh, I have a Dragoon Negate, as always. Uh, Droplet will get this Anaconda off the field, because I'm at um, 1,500 life points right now. So even if he did have a play, which he it turns out not to have a play, I can use Droplet to get rid of uh, this Anaconda, right? Um, and then, like, negate a thing or whatever. So And then I also have Prince's Illusion to, like, boost my Dragoon attack in battle phase if I really need to. So yeah, this I mean I have I have some like way more than he does. Like, he literally like screwed himself by Zeusing, but like how else was he gonna out Dragoon, right? And the funny part is like he mentions here, uh, check out the chat here, another one, right? Like because I make another Dragoon, and I'm like yes. Uh, he's like sheesh. I'm like dude, it's a Dark Magician deck. Like why would I? Why wouldn't I have a second Dragoon? It's like it's like an Evoke player summons a second Mechaba, and you're like wait really you have another one? Like yeah dude, it's my Freaking boss monster, what'd you expect? Anyway. Uh, so yeah, he draws Ash, useless. Uh, and then he, he 
goes ahead and surrenders, because what the, what the hell else is he going to do? Alright, so we do some side decking. So, it doesn't show... For some reason, it doesn't show what, what I side deck, but uh, I'm going to assume I'm going to go second this time. Uh, because I really doubt like he's going to make me go first after having just lost going first. Um, and most people prefer to go sec go first anyway. I don't know. I, I just have a hunch that he's going to make me go second this time, right? Um, so I side in going second. Dark Three Dark Rulers and three evenly matched. Um, and I think that's all I really need, honestly. Like, they don't really have, you know, scary back row for me to deal with other than, you know, so I didn't put in Cosmics. But anyway, so let's see what happens. Uh, so yeah, he does make me go second. And check this out. <laughs> Alright, so first you might saying, oh, Dark Magician Girl, Dark Magician, Soul Servant. Oh, that's a, that's kind of bricky, right? Like, you, you literally can't do anything with this. But, uh, I'm going to get a six card. We'll see what it is. At this point, I'm hoping uh, maybe it's like Rod or something, uh, or Illusion, or Prep, or whatever. But look what else I have in my ha sorry, hand. Dark Rule No More Evenly Match. Like, I swear, every time I draw both of these, I all, I, it's like a 100% win rate. Uh, if I draw one of them, like, if I drew Dark Ruler, it's it's probably enough most of the time. Even then, it depends, right? But, like, yeah, this is funny. Um, so I'm going to fast forward here because this turn literally takes, like, it, like forever. And uh, after spending so much time on this game, it, it made me really think, like, all right, this is why I don't play Dueling Book. It takes forever to get through one match. It's just not worth it. Right, just look at this. So... So this is fast forwarded, right? Imagine at at like real speed how 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 long this is taking. By the way, I don't know what the DDD KD combo is. All I know is uh use the slime to fuse in hand, use the skull to fuse in grave. You get the first Geng uh, Genghis, it, 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 it extends your combo, and then you get a second Genghis, and then you set up a bunch of, like, negates and stuff, like, and then and, and there's, like, a Pendulum Summon in there somewhere. Like, that, that's the extent that I know of about how this deck works. But again, I, well, as soon as I saw my opening hand Dark Rune more even in match, it's like, I, you know, I want to just AFK, like, go do something else and come back when it's my turn. I mean, in this game, you can't. You have to, like, interact with your opponent and be like, oh, nothing on Summon, nothing on Resolution, right? And that's that's another reason why I prefer EDO Pro or like Yu-Gi-Oh Mega. Like one, I know they're not cheating, and two, like they don't need to check with me or anything. I can just turn off chaining, right? And then go do like go do some, some something else, like fuck off for a bit, and then come back when the their turn is over, and I can finally play, right? It's like I like I don't care what they, what they actually do. So especially when I have a card like like Dark Ru Dark World even and evenly in my hand, like I literally don't care what they play. One of the funniest things is that this dude kept Nibiru in, in his deck. Uh, I don't summon more than five times. My fifth, my fourth summon is Dragoon. Sometimes Dragoon is the fifth summon. And by that point, I have a negate. So, yeah, he like if you're playing against Dark Magician, side this out. I don't know why he kept it. Like if he counted, have he counted my summons last last game? He would have seen. Oh, I never summoned five times, right? <laughs> Although it's funny I say that because uh, Nibiru might come up later, and as you'll see soon. Oh my god. Alright. Um, so, I my top deck is Soul Servant, which is not great because it's... It literally does nothing for me, right? Uh, like, I, I can't actually combo. I can break his board, like, completely into shambles, which I'm going to do here. So, Dark Ruler. Bam. And then, bam. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, now he has his boss monster, which, like, his effects is not live. So, this dude's effects says, uh... Um, once per chain, when a monster card your opponent controls activates effect... Quick effect, you can either detach two materials from this card or destroy one dark contract you control, and if you do that, attach that as material. So, not only does this not negate monster effects, 
but he needs two material to use it, or he needs another a, a, a contract card on his field. Neither of which he has. So this, so he kept this monster from evenly matched, but like it literally does nothing for him, other than it's just like a three K beat stick, right? I mean, maybe he'll draw what he needs next turn to make this effect live, but like, yeah, my my hand is not good, like, <laughs> uh, other than those cards. So I'm just gonna set Soul Servant and pass, which is hilarious. Yeah, so he saw, he he draws Gamma Nibiru. Gamma does nothing because he has a monster, and Nibiru mostly does nothing because I I don't really summon um five monsters. But anyway, uh, so end phase. I'm gonna use uh, Soul Servant to grab Rod. So Rod is gonna get Secrets of Dark. All right, so he attempts to Gamma Rod here. I mean, he must be a, a relatively new player, and I tell him, uh, you can't Gamma if you have a monster on your field, buddy. But now I know he has Gamma, right? So, Seekers of Dark Magic. I'm gonna make the Dark Magicians. I'm gonna put Souls on top of the deck. Draw it. Summon Souls. Get Draw 2. Get rid of Dark Rule no more, because I don't need it. Anaconda. So, so this time he does, he does, um, I do get to five summons, like Dragoon is my fifth summon, and he tries to Nibiru me, but then I'm like, uh, and then he immediately tributes himself, I'm like, wait, uh, so oh, he said thinking on summon, right? So this, so this Nibiru is supposed to be on summon, but, uh, yeah, I have, I have Dragoon Negate, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I, I get rid of Nibiru, I pop his dude, and then this becomes 4,000, and he's at 4k, yeah, he's, he's done, right? One thing, one thing I will say, and this is a misplay on his part, so he had Gamma and Nibiru in hand, right? What he should have done is let me pop his, uh, DDD dude, uh, in the main phase, like with Dragoon, and then at the end of my main phase, activate Nibiru, and when I try to negate with Dragoon, he can chain Gamma. So that could definitely, um, you know, do it. The only problem with that is, uh, okay, he'll clear my board, right? He'll out my first Dragoon, so I still have another Dragoon, of, like, that I can make later, right? And he's going to give me a really, really big token, right? So Gamma resolves first. Gamma's going to put uh, itself and Driver on the field. That's th that's twenty. Uh, that's 3,500 attack, right? Uh, plus uh, 3K from this Dragoon here. It's uh, 6,500 Plus 500 is 7,000, plus 2,800 is 9,800 attack. So he's going to give me a 9,800 attack Nibiru token if he does that. And then, the, the gam, uh, you know, like, he'll he'll just have a 3k Nibiru, and I have Salvation to bring back Dark Magician, Dark Magician on my field, Recycle Rod, and, and potentially go into, like, another uh, Dragoon next turn, or just swing for game because I have a gigantic, um, right? So he would need, like, a Miracle top deck, which I don't, I, I don't think DDD has the card like economy for, for first of all uh i don't think that he has a one card combo like one card that can like pop off uh but also look at his grave and his banish like most of his stuff is gone right like i'm pretty sure he went through all these link monsters here uh, let me see yeah two of them are in a grave one is in a grave one is banished one is banished face down right he went through through two of his Genghis. like yeah he, he's gone through so much of his stuff that I honestly don't see, like, even if he played correctly here, how he could possibly win this game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, even though he misplayed, it would not have mattered. I, I would have won the following turn but because uh, of what I have currently. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so, that's DDD matchup. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting deck. Like, I, I mean, it looks like a very fun rogue deck. The fact that this that pack took this to top eight is good because it's not a it's not a degenerate deck that just rushes Barone Scythlock, uh, you know, DP every game. Like it actually does some interesting and different unique things. And it uses like three types of summoning. It uses fusion summoning, XE summoning, oh, pendulum summoning and link summoning actually, yeah. Uh it can also use synchro summonings. It, it's just less common. But yeah, like you basically can see like every type of summoning in the game with this deck, which is pretty cool. Except for tribute tribute summoning and ritual summoning, I suppose. But anyway, uh but yeah, but note, I guess this is another example of me of me showing you that I'm using the Dark Magicians uh, as an extender. 
And yeah, there could have been a different route I took with it. So in instead of using Soul Servant to stack Rod, I could have used Soul Servant to stack Illusion of Chaos, right? Uh, Illusion of Chaos will search Rod. Um, actually, I don't think that's a good idea. Illusion of Se Chaos would search Souls, right? Put Dark Magician Girl back in the deck. Souls can summon itself, send Dark Magician Girl, and then use Soul Servant to search uh, Rod, and then go into Rod. So I could have done that if I wanted to stick stay under five summons, but like... I honestly, you know, after I saw him discard a Nibiru, I'm like, oh, oh, I don't think he'd actually have another Nibiru in him. Plus, even if he does, like, Dragoon is my fifth summon, right? It's not my four, it's not my sixth. So, yeah, I decided to go for the Dark Magicians, not not just because it's just like another body, it's just like more more attack power, but like, it gets me more draws, and like with Salvation, uh, every turn I get a draw, a free draw. So, yeah, I decided to be a little greedy, I guess, I suppose, with this one, even though I could have like avoided this. Um, so yeah, use the Dark Magicians as an extender, not as a boss monster. So, anyway. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of Dueling Book. Uh, this game took forever. I swear, this this game went on for, like, two hours. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. Um, it just felt really, really long. Uh, especially in Game 2, where, like, he just, just took had a, such a long turn. Um, and I'm just, like, waiting around, waiting to just break his board. Like, yeah, I would rather uh, play on Yu-Gi-Oh! Mega or EDO Pro. Like, Yu -Gi like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Mega has a ranked ladder. So, like, people there, are, like... Take, take it a little bit more seriously, but interesting matchup. Yeah, I, ha I hadn't posted this one before, but uh, yeah, hopefully y'all can enjoy. Um, uh, this this game did not convince me about the new tech options, like the 10 traps I took out for the like, Chalice, uh, Droplet, Super Poly, etc. Uh, this this du this match here did not convince me that was the right choice. Like, if I had Torrential game one, I would have instantly won. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess it's it's just more flexibility. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed this, and yeah, feel free to Talk, talk in the comments. And if you're more familiar with the DDD deck, please tell me, like, I, I'm not that familiar with the deck. I want to learn more. If there's a better negate point, if there's, like, if this dude misplayed or he could have done something better, like, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, later. Bye.